What is up, everybody? Today, we are going to be discussing Lesson 8.2, City Life. Um, as industry grows in Ohio, so does the big cities such as Toledo, Cleveland, Akron, Cincinnati, Columbus, these cities grow as well. So we're going to talk about what was city life like and what changes were needed throughout the late 1800s. So we're going to talk a lot today about immigration and how people came to Ohio from other countries for a new life, new opportunity. So, before they could come to Ohio, many Europeans had to come through a place known as Ellis Island. And Ellis Island was an immigration station in New York that all immigrants had to go through. At Ellis Island, each immigrant was examined by a doctor to make sure they were healthy to enter the United States. They were questioned by an inspector. You know, what was what is their background? Where are they coming from? Why are they moving to the United States? Do they have any criminal um, activities in their past? And so on. Um, the process of going through Ellis Island, it could be up to four hours, or it could be many days. So, after passing through Ellis Island, then they could go anywhere they wanted. Some stayed in New York, while others went to Ohio. And so, on this screen... Um, that you're looking at right now. The, the photo on the right side of the page is the outside of Ellis Island. Okay, boats would pull up and immigrants would um, exit the boat and enter into Ellis Island to go through the system. And then the picture on the left side of the page is inside. It's the um, one of the rooms, the gathering room of Ellis Island, where thousands of immigrants could be in one day, and they're just waiting for their turn to be pro to go through the process, to see the doctor, to talk to the inspector, and to go through um, in hopes of being let into the United States to live and to work. So, a new life in Ohio. So many immigrants came to Ohio in the late 1800s. So once they left Ellis Island, they came to Ohio looking for the jobs in its many industries. So we talked about some of them in the last lesson. We have the oil industry, the cash register industry, the rubber industry. But Ohio was home to many different industries. And so immigrants came looking for jobs. Many immigrants moved into ethnic neighborhoods of towns and cities because the language and customs were familiar. So immigrants kind of gathered together in neighborhoods. So you would have one neighborhood that could be the section of Italian people. And then you'd have Polish immigrants and Hungarian immigrants and German immigrants. And so they lived in these ethnic neighborhoods that they spoke the same languages, had the same customs, you know, had the same history. And so we still have this in cities today. If you 
if you go to Cleveland, you have um, Little Italy. You have, you know, these ethnic neighborhoods that they might have restaurants or stores that represent their their food or their customs, their beliefs. All right, so many immigrants came to Ohio looking for jobs, and they settled into these ethnic neighborhoods. And so, what were some of the challenges of for these immigrants that were coming into Ohio? So, as thousands of people entered into the cities of Ohio, what were some of the challenges? And some of them are very serious challenges that had to be dealt with for the safety of these immigrants. The first thing is these immigrants had no choice but to often live in these crowded tenements. And these tenements are poorly kept apartment buildings. Sometimes families would have to just live in one room all together so like a family of five or six living in one room so very so we had today we have one family if you live in an apartment you live with your family and you might have a an upper uh an upstairs and a downstairs you have a all different kinds of rooms well in these tenement apartment buildings there was a lot of families because every family lived in one room or maybe two rooms so they're very crowded and they were poorly kept very bad conditions in uh as cities expanded and grew um, there were so many people that these cities became crowded and they suffered from a garbage and a pollution problem and so you would see like in cleveland where sewer lines so you're um bathroom waste would go down these sewer lines and be dumped into the Cuyahoga River. So if you lived in Cleveland, the sewer lines were dumped into the Cuyahoga River and trash was dumped in Lake Erie. And because of this unsanitary condition and these and this pollution problem, we see diseases that spread throughout cities because people are so close together in these poor conditions that disease was easily um, spread between people. So you had diseases as well. Many immigrants didn't know English when they came into Ohio. And parents often learned English from their children. So their children would go to school or go to work and pick up on English, and then teach that to their parents. So immigrants didn't know English. They spoke the language from where they came from, right? They came from Italy, they're going to speak Italian. If they came from Germany, they're going to speak German. So those were some of the challenges that immigrants faced when they came into Ohio. And here is a photo um, this is a later on. This is in the m maybe the 50s, 1950s. This is a tenement housing. All right, these are the, this is what it looked like. Many different apartments together, poor conditions, not kept up. I mean, when you have hundreds. Of families living in these apartment complexes like this it's not their fault that this is falling apart you know the the owner of the building the city they did, really did not care until later on and then they do so these were the conditions that immigrants were moving into in search of a new opportunity in the United States and the good thing that happened was many people saw these conditions 
and they decided something needed to be done. And so settlement houses were being built. The Hiram House in Cleveland was a settlement house. The first neighbor, neighborhood guild in Columbus was a settlement house. And these settlement houses were places that offered education, hot meals, and other types of services for immigrants. And large cities in Ohio began to work to protect their people. And so we see cities like Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, start to put in programs to protect the people living there. So now they had, some of them built sewer lines to bring waste to treatment centers. So instead of dumping it into the, the river, the sewage waste would go into these treatment centers to be taken care of and sterilized and put through the process. Large cities also spent money on paved roads between 1890 and 1900, so 10 years, the city of Cincinnati paved 150 miles of its streets, which is a lot. Right? They're, they're worried about the safety of people, and paved roads are more sanitary. Right? It's, not, it's easier to keep clean. Electric streetlights were starting to be placed in the cities so that even at night you could walk the streets safely and you could also drive um, at night and improved fire departments cities began using horse-drawn tire um tire horse-drawn fire trucks so fire trucks that were drawn uh, that were pushed by horses drawn um, pulled by horses and you also had new fire alarm systems that would notify the the fire department if there was a fire so they could get to it quickly because you saw people live so close together if one if there is a fire in one apartment, it spreads quickly. So they're trying to find these new ways to protect those people. And so here's the set settlement house in Cleveland. This is the Hiram house. And so here's some immigrants taking an education class. Here are some children outside the settlement house having a snowball fight. And here are some children cashing their paycheck.